to Global Campus's Distance Learning Week 10, Flowers and Plants. Spring in New England. The weather in spring can be hard to predict. Some days are full of sun while others can be cool and rainy. During the spring months, we begin to see many beautiful flowers and plants. Native plants. A plant is considered native if it has occurred naturally in a region, ecosystem, or habitat without human introduction. Common Vermont Native Plants There are many beautiful plants and flowers that you may see in our area. We will talk about a few today. Native plants are healthier and stronger. Plants native to an area are more likely to establish quickly and will naturally be hardy and healthy. Native plants have evolved over thousands of years, learning to thrive in areas. They grow in harmony with the environment, the soil, the water supply, the varying weather throughout all the seasons, and other native companions. New England Aster. This native perennial occurs in moist prairies, meadows, thickets, low valleys, and stream banks. Northern Blue Flag. This species of iris is native to North America and the eastern United States. The northern blue flag is common in sedge meadows, marshes, and along stream banks and shores. Flowers are usually light to deep purple, purple and violet colors are not uncommon, and bloom during May to July. Turtle Head The turtle head is a perennial found throughout most of the eastern half of the United States. This flower generally is found along stream banks and damp ground and usually grows to a height of two to three feet. The plant has a square stem with leaves that are opposite, toothed, and narrow. White flowers, often with a pink tinge, appear between midsummer and fall. The flowers are irregular, two-lipped, and grow in dense spikes. Red Baneberry. The red baneberry is a three foot tall and two foot wide clumping perennial which displays spiky racemes of white flowers in late spring that are held above the foliage. The berries are exceptionally showy and especially effective in shady woodland beds. These berries are very poisonous to humans, but not to birds. Plants that help wildlife. When winter loosens its grip on Vermont, the birds come back and are looking for a good meal. Plants provide different types of food for birds and other wildlife, like insects, berries, nuts, and seed. Red Osier Dogwood. The berries are a preferred food of many birds, including the common crow, gray catbird, American robin, and purple finch. The berries ripen from summer to fall, depending on the species, and their high fat content provides valuable nutrients for migrating songbirds in the fall. Brambles and vines. Brambles and vines, blackberries and raspberries, provide food for many animals, including orioles, wood thrushes, mockingbirds, thrashers, raccoons, and chipmunks. Milkweed plant. Monarch butterfly caterpillars feed on the milkweed plant and the sweet clusters of pink flowers attract monarch and other butterflies. Wildflowers for wildlife. Chicory and evening primrose are often probed by birds for their seeds. The tall, sweet clover and black-eyed Susans attract bees, butterflies, and other insects. Thick swaths of Queen Anne's lace also attract butterflies. Tips for improving plant identification. In the plant world, guidebooks provide us with the name tag. Each time you go out into a new park area, the goal should be to get to know a few new plants. Just like at a party, you can't expect to meet everyone or learn everyone's name, so take your time. Here are a few tips to help you get to know the plants around you. Pick up a good guidebook. You can find books for wildflowers, trees, and edible and medicinal plants. Take a camera. Sometimes the plants you're seeing will not be found in your guidebook. When that happens, take a close picture of the leaves, stem, flowers, and any fruits. This allows you to collect parts of the plant to ask a local perennial expert or do your own research. 
Keep a nature journal. Keep track of the plants you've already learned about and paste the pictures into your journal at all phases of development. Enjoying plants at home. Sketching plants can be a nice way to enjoy the outdoors and express yourself creatively. Take a nature walk. A walk can be a fun way to observe the plants around you. You can bring a camera to help capture what you see. Go on a scavenger hunt. There are several lists available online. You can create your own list and challenge your global campus classmates. Global Campus's Plant Share. Spend some time looking for beautiful flowers and plants in your area. Snap a photo, sketch a picture, or write a description of what you see, smell, or hear, and share it with the Global Campus's Foundation community. Post it on the Facebook Learning Group or send it to your academic coordinator.